This video is going to be a little bit long and a little bit tough. You're probably going to have to pause and go back a couple times to see what I do and how I do it because there's a lot to go through in this video. We're going to be talking about adjustments and adjustment layers which are two similar but very different animals and there's a lot of different things that we can do. So I'm going to start in the image menu for most of these things and then I'm going to show you how adjustment layers work through the layers panel. Before I do that, I'll just explain. When I'm doing things in the image menu through adjustments, all these things are destructive. As you remember from the masking video, that means that whatever I do here is making a permanent change to my picture. If I am absolutely sure that I want this picture black and white and there's no going back, that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go adjustments, black and white. This picture was supposed to be black and white. There's no looking back. I'll do it here. It's destructive. But if I come to the adjustments panel over here, I have things like brightness, contrast, levels, curves, a lot of the stuff that we're going to be talking about in the menus. And these are adjustment layers. They're non-destructive, but they have their own special problems as well. And we'll get into that. The first color change adjustment that we're going to make is we're going to show off the brightness contrast, which is here under image, adjustments, brightness contrast. Now this changes the now this changes the lightness and darkness of your pixels. Uh, both the brightness and the contrast sliders do that. Brightness focuses strictly on the brightness values, whereas contrast also plays with the color values. So if I bring the brightness all the way up, the lights get lighter, and if all the way down, the darks get darker. However, if I play with the contrast, it not only does that, but it does it with the actual color values, so it's playing with those blues and greens. So now with low contrast, the colors kind of even out a little bit, and at high contrast, they become much more starkly different. And you can click the auto button and have Photoshop guess for you if you want. That this would be optimal based on all the color that's in the picture. We'll up the brightness by 71, remove contrast by 17 or so, and you kind of get this middle ground. Um, that's Photoshop's choice. The alternative is you can do the adjustment layer and you can do brightness contrast here. Now you see the difference is that my background is completely untouched but it is adding a new layer on top of it. And that is now being played with here which is a familiar looking panel but this is non-destructive. So I can now do this, I'll do 71 again and negative 17 just as it suggested before. It looks identical but the difference here is that this is its own layer and that is important. Can you imagine why it's important? Because it's undoable. I can decide later that I don't think I want this at all. Now the caveat with adjustment layers and all adjustment layers that we do is that this applies to everything that's underneath it. In Photoshop CS6 you cannot um, have this apply to just one layer if there's 40 layers underneath it it will apply to all 40 layers underneath it. Yes, even if it's in a group, it will apply to everything underneath it. In addition to brightness and contrast, you can also use image adjustments levels to change the black and white point levels with super fine control. And the way that you have super fine control is with the eyedroppers. This is the black eyedropper tool and this will allow you to tell Photoshop what the darkest dark is on this image and it will adjust everything else proportionately. For instance, if I click on something that's not pure black and I tell it this is the darkest I can get, it's going to make that pure black, measure the shift and then apply that shift to everything else. So for instance, if I click over here on this tree branch, you're not going to see much change. It only changed a little bit. However, if I were to click on her shirt and say this is the darkest point on my document, everything's going to disappear. Now the same with the white. I want the white to be, my purest white is to be about here on the tree. I already have a pure white here, but maybe I want to change things up a little bit. I'm going to choose from a white on the tree, which is actually closer to a little bit of gray. And this looks like So I'm undoing that. And I'm just going to set her shirt as the whitest white. And you can adjust levels that way. And levels also sits here in the adjustments panel under levels, which is the second one in and you have the same options, the same changes, you can do it on the fly and it's non-destructive. Next up on our list is black and white and that is under image, adjustments, black and white. Now before I click on this 
I want you to take a good look at the picture. I think it's obvious. Almost every color in the color spectrum is represented on this picture. So when I click black and white, what it has done is it has taken all of the color out. So she looks fairly normal, which is, well, actually pretty surprising because the colors were so different, I thought it would show up on her face more. Well, let me uncheck preview real quick. And let me look at, I've got a little red over here, some red over here, some red over here, some red over here. I want that to show up more often. And I have a slider here just for reds. So I can play with how the reds are handled. And by making the reds darker, everywhere that red was in the picture is now becoming darker. So how it was before, it wasn't showing up all that much. But now as I play with the slider, I can decide I want red to show up more often. Now what was the middle stripe on her lip that was blue. So now I'm going to play with blues and I want blues to be brighter. Alternatively you can take the non-destructive route and you can make an adjustment layer here in the adjustments panel. And it has all the same options that the adjustments menu did except this as its own layer is non-destructive and it affects everything underneath it. You can click the auto button. You can make that blue a little bit darker and that is it and it's just chilling there until you decide to get rid of it or if you want this change to be permanent then you can select both of them and you can merge them together and you can do this with any adjustment layer if you're absolutely sure that this is exactly how you want it to look you can merge the layers but this is destructive this is not undoable now the background lacks color it's never coming back and remember as long as it is its own layer it will remain a non-destructive effect on your picture. You can also make changes to the pixels in terms of their color value using image, adjustments, hue saturation. And in playing with this slider, it'll shift the color values of each pixel on your document in proportion to how much you move the slider. So what started as blue and green can become teal and a brownish wheat color. And if we bring it all the way down here, then we have orange skies and purple grass. If you play with the saturation, removing saturation essentially removes color, making it gray. And if we pump it all the way up, it makes it a neon purple. I don't recommend playing with the lightness slider because all that does is it adds like a black or white film on top of it. So as you move this slider, you simply start adding black to the top of your document. It doesn't look that great. No matter how I've tried to play with the lightness slider, it always ends up looking cheesy. So I would just say don't bother. Hue and saturation also lives in the adjustment panel over here and you can do the same thing that you did there as a non-destructive layer. Another thing that hue saturation is good for is you can remove just one color from your document if necessary. Now when dealing with digital photography there's a concept called white balance and it depends on the environment that you're in but it will compensate if you have like fluorescent lighting or something to try and get the white of your document to look as white as possible. Now in an environment with old school lights your lighting may actually look a little bit yellow and so the camera will compensate by adding some blue. And then what ends up happening here is this camera went outside without having the white balance being readjusted and so that extra blue compensation was dropped on top of this picture instead of being readjusted so that the whites look white. So we have a really blue picture. Now check this out. If we come to adjustments, hue saturation again, there's this little drop down menu that says master and we can change it to cyans or blues or magentas and this is a light blue so I'm going to go with cyans and I'm going to turn down the saturation of my cyans and as I do so the blue drops out of the picture. Now it doesn't look quite right because now there's practically no blue in the picture so I'm going to come to blues and I'm going to pump the blues up a little bit and make them a little lighter and my picture looks corrected. Sometimes you may find yourself having to change just a single color in your document. You might already be done with it and somebody gives you some feedback going, you know, that would look a lot better if his hair was black. And you're like, you know what, I really think you might be right. Let's see what we can do about that. And instead of going all the way back through your document and digging through layers trying to find the hair color layer, and hopefully it's on its own layer, it might not be, in which case now we're going to have to find a way to isolate the orange color of his hair and change just that. And so image, adjustments, replace color is where you need to go for that. 
And this is a combination of a bunch of tools that you're already familiar with. For starters, the eyedropper tool is going to allow me to select the color that I want to change. Right now, all the stuff that's showing up on this little panel that's white is the color that it's going to change. So it looks like right now it's selecting black. It's selecting the outlines. I want just his hair. So I'm going to click, and there we go. Now we have the white of his hair is in this mask window. So anything that's white is color that's going to be changed. And we want to turn his hair per our client's request. We want to change it black. So I'm going to drop the lightness down to the floor. And there's our black. And I've got this orange halo around it because my picture is all pixelated because I pulled it off the internet. So we're going to play with the fuzziness. And the fuzziness plays with the tolerance on the edge of this white mask. And if I play with it too much, it'll start darkening his face as well, but that's about as close as I can get. Uh, I probably want to bring that down a bit more to there. There. Now you can't see any of the pixelation or any of the compression on the picture, which was showing up on his face. And I've changed the orange for the most part, except for this pain in the butt halo, which I can just paint in later. I've changed it to pure black. And I can click OK. And that's it. And that was a combination of masking, the eyedropper tool from Levels, and the hue saturation menu was all inside that one window. I'll show you again. There you see. Eyedropper tool, masking, and hue saturation. It's all part of this one little panel. All right. I haven't shown you everything, and I know that. There are a lot of things in the adjustments menu that you're going to be using. So I want you guys to really explore and just take a look around this program and really just start to understand what some things do. There are some really simple things in there that I glossed over, like inverting your document, which turns all the colors inside out and sometimes creates high octane nightmare fuel. We've also got things that I haven't talked about, like color balance and HDR toning, which really makes pictures look awesome if you do it right. Alright, so I want you guys to play with this. If you have any questions, let me know.